Hey everyone, this is Eric Stark with the Smart RVer Podcast. Welcome to the show. Today we're going to be talking about drum brakes that come on trailers. And when I say drum brakes, you all know what I'm talking about. This is your standard 12 by 2 drum brake that comes on so many trailers. Now, just so we understand things, drum brakes have been around for decades. It's not a new technology. Even disc brakes have been around for decades. Not as long as drum brakes but more trailers are starting to come with disc brakes and you can get add-on kits to do disc brakes on your trailer. But that's not what we're gonna focus on today. Disc brakes are a different animal. They are a better braking system in a lot of ways. There are some faults that can be found with them, but we're not gonna get into that today. We're gonna focus on drum brakes and how to avoid this situation where we got nothing left on these brakes and how to repair it if you do find yourself in shoes that look like this. Pretty pathetic. Now this is the real deal. I shouldn't have set that down. That came into our shop. Person thought maybe they needed brakes. Well, as you can see, these brakes are toast. You know, they've been overheated down to the steel. That is no good. Now, trailer brakes are very simple. Kind of, it's like they work or they don't. Occasionally you can get into some odd problems with them with the electrical or they're just not working right, but that's very rare. Generally they work or they don't. And I'm talking about the electronic portion of it. And the electronics is done with this magnet. All trailer brakes, drum brakes on trailers have a magnet. What the magnet does, it gets energized when you push on the brake pedal it sends the power to the, through the brake controller to the trailer brakes. And then, then that magnet, when it's energized, it attaches itself to the face of this drum right here where I'm pointing with my finger. So that, that face is where the magnet attaches. And when it attaches there, it pushes out the shoes and voila, the trailer starts to slow down. And that's what we want. We want the trailer to slow down on its own, not the vehicle that's towing the trailer to slow it down. Trailer brakes are very important. Without them, stopping can be a nightmare, can ruin the brakes on your truck, your truck brakes can overheat, all sorts of problems can happen, can be a very dangerous situation. So we don't wanna mess with the brakes. When they need to be replaced, you replace them. So brakes are pretty simple. So here's <clears throat> a newer brake assembly. And by the way, this is pretty much how brakes come anymore. Brake shoes are very expensive, buying them by a set. Magnets are expensive. Most people just replace everything like this, the whole backing plate, the shoes, the magnet comes complete, even bolts and wire connectors. Now this particular one is a Lippert, 12 inches by two inches. And this one has moving forward technology, which is all located down in here that adjusts the brakes when you're going forward. Now it doesn't over adjust, so you don't have to worry about that, but as you're driving, braking, it's gonna keep the brake shoes adjusted. And what's nice about having the brake shoes adjusted all the time, your brake controller is gonna stay more accurate. You're not gonna have that weird braking pattern where sometimes when it gets real hot, the brakes work super good. When it's cooler, they don't work at all. Or that inconsistent braking, it'll help with that. It won't eliminate it, but it's certainly gonna help. Where this is older technology, this is an older backing plate. Just typical technology, it's been around forever. It's not like what the Lippert ones have. And it's not just Lippert now, Dexter also has <coughs> backing plates with the moving forward technology to keep the brake shoes adjusted. So, you know, these things are pretty basic and I think most people understand it. There's just different sizes. You know, most 3,500 or smaller trailers might have a 10 by two backing plate assembly. Bigger than that will be a 12 by two. You get to like 7,000 pound axles, it'll be a 12 by two and a half. It's simple and they're very easy to replace. You know, you've got two wires and it doesn't matter how you hook them up. They're not positive, negative in the sense where you need to worry about it and the wires coming off the trailer or the out of the axle probably won't be color coded either. They might be black, they might be brown, they might be white. You just hook them up, it doesn't matter. The magnets will work, the brakes will work. 
You just have to remember when you put on the brake shoes to make sure you adjust them first before you bolt up or uh, finish putting the hub on and tighten up the wheel bearings, you want to get them adjusted. Then maybe after you get all that done, you can get in the backside of the, uh, the backing plate and adjust them up a little finer if you need to. There's always a spot to get in there and adjust them. They make tools for that, a little spoon. You can use a flathead screwdriver if that's all you had. It's a little harder to do, but you can adjust them that way manually. You want to start off with them adjusted right. Just makes it easier for testing the brakes after you get them installed. Now, as I said, this is uh, somebody who didn't maintain their brakes. This thing is not only ugly looking, you know, it shouldn't be this nasty looking. This thing's gotten hot, you know, it's down to the steel. You actually see bluing in here. This thing got smoking hot. And so, obviously, it's not going to work good. So, keep these brakes up to date. Check them. Now, how long do they last? That's all going to depend on braking. But you should repack your wheel bearings every 10 to 12,000 miles. That's per Dexter. So if you do that, you're going to be in there and inspect them. And maybe take a picture of them while you have it apart. That way you can look at it down the road. This is what my brakes were at at this point in time. You know, rather than trying to remember it, you take a picture. It helps quite a bit. And your brakes, when they get down to 25%, which that's the thickness of the pad versus 100%, gets down to 25%, I'd say just replace them. Since you already have it apart, why try to squeeze out another 25% unless you know you're going to go for years on that because you don't use your RV that much. But if you use your RV a lot, I'd say replace them. And just buy a complete backing plate. And try to get one with the moving forward technology. The other side are, are still out there. They're cheaper. But if you get the newer style ones, you don't have to worry about adjusting the brakes or you shouldn't have to worry about it. Brake, brake assemblies are pretty simple, but you want to keep them maintained. Definitely stay up to date on it. And also, I mentioned wheel bearings. So this is you know, a typical wheel bearing you'd find in a trailer. This is the dust cover that's on the hub. This is a smaller one. And then you have a grease seal. Always replace the grease seals. When you repack your wheel bearings or if you pull it off to inspect it just put new grease seals on for five or six bucks a wheel or less it's worth doing it keeps that grease inside where it's supposed to be if the grease were to come through the seal you know right here it's going to get on the brake shoes and ruin the shoes and ruin your stopping power and a lot of trailers have this type of dust cap on it and these are called easy lube axles because behind this dust cap on the, on the spindle, there's a zerk fitting that's meant to be greased. Be careful greasing that zerk fitting. You don't want to pump so much grease in there that it starts oozing out of the seal or it pushes the seal off. That's not what it's designed for. It's designed to just keep some grease in there to keep water out. It's almost like bearing buddies on a boat trailer. It's not the same, but it's similar to that. You still have to inspect the bearings and, and repack them every 10 to 12,000 miles. So don't be misled by this. It's not a substitute for greasing the wheel bearings. In fact, the grease doesn't really get into the wheel bearings. It just gets into the drum and keeps it full of grease. It doesn't spin through there. It's not like having oil in there where it's going to slosh around and everything's lubricated equally. It's not that way at all. It just packs the drum full of grease generally between the two bearings. There's a good idea, don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking it, but if you don't have this type of spindle, don't worry about it. Just repack your wheel bearings and go on with life like normal. People have done it for decades with no problems. And this is your typical looking drum for a RV trailer. So you got your surface where the brake shoes ride, you got your magnet surface, you know where your bearings go, your studs on the front. This happens to be a 10 inch drum. That's for a smaller axle, like a 3,500 pound. And you know, axles are pretty simple. Bearings are simple. Bearings are based on the size of the axle. Now this bearing is too big for the drum I just held up. But the, the bearings are very easy to figure out. In fact, in the description of this YouTube video, I will put a breakdown of the size of the axles with the bearing numbers. And most of your axles take, well, there's only a few bearings, really. So they cross over. Some like a 7,000 pound axle might have one bearing that's the same on a 5,200 on a pound axle. 
and then it'll have a different bearing because they're all interchangeable because basically the axles are the same other than maybe the wall thickness and the bearing numbers. So you don't have to get too worried about figuring this out and you can always match these up. You know, most RV stores carry bearings, auto parts stores carry them. Trailers are easy to go to an RV store and just match them up if you can't figure out the numbers. But like I said, I'll have it in the description. Grease seal numbers, bearing numbers, race numbers, everything. Backing plates are simple. Whatever you have is what you have. The brake shoes are 10 by two, 12 by two, 12 by two and a half, three sizes there for the most part. Very simple. All right, so I want to wrap this up. I hope it helps. If you have any questions, you can contact me through YouTube or you can go to the smartrver.com website and contact me through the contact us page there if you have any questions. So this is Eric Stark with the Smart RVer podcast and I hope to see you in the next video.